okay, now I slaved over this CAD file, and the, the rate at which I was still finding mistakes right up until the end uh, was terrifying, but I think I got everything, um, everything reasonably correct. And so I'm just gonna get in, test out a couple things here to make sure certain things are right. Like here's our button, does it fit in the hole? Yes, just barely. You need to have 30 millimeter holes. I drilled everything on the prototype panel with a one and one eighth inch hole saw, that's 29 millimeters. That's what you need for the American buttons, and I just made the Japanese buttons fit just by cramming them in there. Obviously, you're not gonna cram it through quarter inch aluminum. You gotta have the holes the right size. Okay, here's a trackball. And does a trackball fit in the hole? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, barely. Well, but perfectly, really. It's exactly an 82 millimeter hole, uh, and that's that's what you need, and that's what we got. And this is the uh, the bottom plate here, and does the trackball fit in the bottom? Yes, it does. Um, I gave that a little bit of extra wiggle room there because it's all rounded and weird and plastic. Um, uh, but I was worried about that not fitting, because if that hole was the wrong size, that'd be a serious problem. And I did say this was laser cut before, but judging by the edge here, this is almost certainly water jet. Um, you see it's got like an abrasive edge. If you don't know what water jet is, they have a, uh, a high pressure stream of water with an abrasive material, just like sand in it. And uh, very narrow jet of water, like 3000 PSI comes in, shoots right through the metal. Okay, so here's how it's gonna go together. We've got the bottom quarter inch panel. It's got holes to attach to the piano hinge and to the top glass bracket, as well as the locking brackets. And we got holes for all of our uh, control boards. Then we got two 16th inch layers. This is where the trackball mounts. And then we've got the middle layer, which is a half inch smaller all the way around. This gives us our space for our T-molding. T-molding theoretically crams in there. Hopefully it will fit. Uh, and then we've got clearance here for the uh, trackball mounting holes. This is backwards. There we go. Problem solved. And then we have the top two layers, or the top two in the middle. This is where the uh, joysticks attach. We are gonna have to countersink these holes manually um, because we want it to be completely flush. I could have had them do it for me, but um, it might have to go through more than one layer and that's kind of a sh shady thing to do and I didn't want them to have to do that. Then we got the top panel. Okay. <laughs> if you're wondering, uh, this entire thing apparently weighs 39 pounds. Um, interesting fact, if you're gonna have it made out of steel, it would weigh over 100 pounds. Uh, so you probably want to go with aluminum. Here it is from the bottom. You can see we've got the effect of having a, a very large piece of aluminum with uh, various stepped cutouts and actually some impossible cutouts and, uh, and mounting holes everywhere and, and everything. Um, I'm actually quite impressed so far with the uh, uh, with the tolerance of everything. Everything seems to uh, to line right up and um, and be very accurate and smooth and nothing's ever nothing's messed up or anything. Um, so uh, I got these from eMachine Shop, like I talked about many videos ago, and um, they seem to do a real good job. So what I've done here is I've uh, just stacked everything up and screwed it together without the top layer, um, because we gotta do some countersinking on these holes here. So this is the joystick mounting bracket, and we got a cutout for it right here. You can see it fits in there and screws together. And here's how it is from the top. We're gonna attach it with this screw, um, but we want this hole to be countersunk so this will be completely flat. Okay, three more like that. So there we go, the, uh, the top panel will now be able to rest on here completely flat and our joystick will be attached. attached and now uh, these hinge holes are on a, on a slot here so we've got a little bit of uh, adjustment space um, so we're gonna leave those finger tight until we've got everything lined up next up we're gonna attach our uh, retention clips here all right they're attached 
attached. Now we can test them out. See the control panel is very secure. Next step is going to be to attach this glass bracket here. Seems solid, no problem so far. Uh, next up we're going to attach our various circuit boards. Okay, everything's nicely attached here. Um, plenty of room for plugs on either side, and when we close it, nothing gets crushed. All right, got it up here on the cabinet to do the final alignment. To line up the box like that. Box is lined up with the cabinet. Lower the thing into place, and then I can uh, slide the panel until it's exactly in the center and then tighten the screws down. Actually quite a bit of uh, grease and uh, powdered aluminum on this from the manufacturing process. Which I'm going to try and clean off a little goo gun and uh, yeah I probably should have done that earlier. Now we're going to put our middle layers back on. You can see we've got uh, cutouts and clearance for all of our screws that we just put in. Here's the middle layer. So you can see here on the middle layer, I've got uh, the half inch offset right here where we're going to have the groove for the T-molding. But I don't have it over here, so that it's easy to line up by just pressing it against the uh, the top bracket. And here's the top two of the middle. So we put our countersinks in before. Now if I was really smart, I would have had the clearances for those screws come all the way through um, this panel. And it would have had, uh, I would put countersink holes in this so that I could screw the middle layers to the bottom so I could take the top layer off without taking the whole thing apart. Um, I did not have that much foresight, um, but we should be able to get together no problem. All right, we're gonna prep our joysticks to go in here. This is the one we used on the control panel. You can see I've already got a uh, hollow shaft in there for, uh, for LED lighting. Uh, I had another hollow shaft coming in for this one, but uh, the post office lost the package. So uh, we just need to put the, uh, it comes with this mounting plate, so we just need to uh, switch that out for this one. Now I had thought I'd had two different variations on this because this one had the, uh, the plastic pieces on the side here, um, but it turns out this one has just been assembled uh, sort of 90 degrees off. Um, it works fine with the flat plate, but um, when I try to put the, uh, the S plate on here, it, uh, it doesn't work. And doing it this way, uh, you're gonna have interference in the other direction. So we're gonna have to take this a little bit further apart. Oh, we can just, uh, yeah, you can flip this um, this little circuit board here any direction you want. And uh, while we're at it, we're going to pop the uh, uh, square restrictor plate out of there and put the octagonal restrictor plate in there. It's just a matter of personal preference. I prefer the octagonal. How the heck do you do this? All right, I figured it out. Push it in, and you rotate, pops right out. Pretty clever. One, bam. Time for the trackball. Um, you see this is a, a super cool trackball. Um, I haven't got it fully assembled um, yet. There's still some things we need to do internally to it. Uh, but that's a whole different video. We're just trying to make sure it fits. Okay, now we're gonna put the top panel on. Okay, it's on there. Doesn't seem to be suspended by anything, seems to be flat, so we're going to put the screws in. It's a fair bit heavier than it used to be. That's what happens when you put 40 pounds of aluminum onto something. Let's, uh, let's put the buttons on.
Okay, so this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. The sort of. Uh, the aluminum is super cool and industrial looking, um, and it's classy, but the problem is uh, it is attached to a seven foot tall purple and yellow late 90s arcade machine, so classy may not be exactly what we're going for. We can class it up a little bit, but this is too classy. So at the very least, we're gonna need uh, a clear coat, um, but I would like to go with uh, a color powder coat. So I've got some swatches here. And uh, we got uh, purple basically to match the front of it. See, the problem is the whole front of the cabinet is purple. Uh, this, is, this is the uh, the cover for the dollar bill dispenser. So the whole front of the cabinet is this color and the piping is yellow. So the purple works. Um, and we can't match this exactly with powder coat. This transparent uh, lollipop purple uh, looks very similar, but the problem is it's it's too similar. You don't want to try to match something and then have it not quite match and be half-assed. It's way better to uh, to go with a deliberate contrast. Um, and also another problem with this, I don't know if it comes up on camera, but this is very smooth and um, it sort of has that like modern electronics problem where every time you touch it you can see your fingerprint, which is gross. Here's what uh, the top is going to look like sparkly purple, and then we'll have the yellow tea molding and then the base of the cabinet. See? So it goes together pretty nicely. A lot better than the, uh, with the aluminum. So now I'm going to take it apart and we're going to send it off to powder coating. It's just like American Chopper.